Hey, hey, how we doing? Welcome to the money and news video of the week. Um, this week to fill time between the news and the money, I got a new thing I'm starting called trucking in the 1900s. Just stories from back in the day for some of us older drivers to reminisce with the way things were done a, little, a lot differently back then. And, uh, I don't know, you young guys might even enjoy it just to hear what it was like back then. It was a great time. It really was. Um, I wish, I wish it was still like it was in the 90s but that's a whole nother thing so we'll do the news um then i'll put that little clip in and then we'll do the money um actually i'm getting ready to take off here so for some reason my clothes are different when i do the last part of this you'll know why i'm headed out to wife we're gonna go eat but the wife found a tonka truck i need to bring the tonka truck back my last one uh they don't last forever. They get beat up in the weather. And since it was winter, I kind of just retired the whole thing. But for those of you know that have been around the channel, I usually roll around with a Tonka truck on the back of my truck. So uh, originally I put it there for kids, but I think people my age um, give me more thumbs up because it's kind of a generational thing. I don't believe most kids play with Tonka trucks, say, with their fingers on their little gadgets all the time. But hey. Anyways, I throw one out there. People seem to like it. it. Gives them something to smile about in this world. So, news. Uh, let's see. First, autonomous trucks, Embark. They're kind of one of the big companies in that. They just laid off like 70% of their workforce. So, uh, things must not be going good in the uh, autonomous truck thing. Which, uh, <laughs> as you guys know, I had mixed feelings for a long time. But, uh... Yeah, I'm not going to lie, man. There was a part of me rooting for autonomous trucks at this point because uh, flip-flop wearing pajama pants, steering wheel holders, I I wouldn't mind seeing them gone. You know, maybe uh, the way they act, the way they drive, they, they whip in and out of traffic. They have no regard for human life, in my opinion. They speed through truck stops. Uh, people are run over and killed every week now in a truck stop. It used to be you that never happened back in the day, but it's a weekly thing now. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I hate to throw any hate out there, but uh, the new generation of truck drivers, uh, by a, a big majority, a lot of them are an embarrassment to the trucking industry, any industry, in my opinion. But so I was kind of secretly hoping, hey, man, maybe we get some more of these autonomous trucks and weed out some of them. And if they got the systems right, I actually thought it can't be any more dangerous because these guys crash into everything in sight. They can't back up. They run over people in truck stops, like I said. So I was back and forth. I'm going to be honest. But, uh, you know, I don't think the general public's ever going to be okay with a truck rolling down the road without a driver in it. So I, I was all for putting the flip-flop in there. Just don't let him do nothing. Let the truck do it. And if something goes wrong, he can take over and hopefully he don't mess up until the system comes back on but nonetheless embark uh they're laying off people so that that must not be moving forward very fast if they're letting people go uh other than that we got truck prices they are dropping 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 not on new trucks used trucks are just going down going down and uh even yours truly is shopping you know i like ellie uh she is a challenge to me at times um, seems like I got to work on her almost every weekend, little piddly things, just age things, not mileage things. Um, everybody's always worried about how many miles and, and yeah, that's important. And I, I've done videos on that. Engine hours are far more important than miles are on a truck, but there's another side to that as a truck ages, when you break the 10 year mark, Things just, it's just one little, little thing after another, whether they cost you a lot of money. The emission stuff always costs you money, but um, right now I've just been battling for months, coolant hose after coolant hose. I mean, there's a ton of them. Now I found another one leaking. Uh, I'm going to have a mechanic do it. I crawled under there and uh, it, it just wasn't good. I, I have been fighting a shoulder injury. It may be a torn rotator cuff. I don't know. I mean, I haven't officially seen a doctor yet, but uh, it's very painful. I can't crawl around under a truck, but I did get under there and look, and it actually looks like a coolant line goes back to the def tank, maybe to keep it warm. I don't know, but that one's leaking. I already replaced the ones 
to the APU. I've replaced the ones to the heater core up to the engine. Every uh, the ones there's heat, there's coolant lines going to the transmission to keep it cool and or warm. Uh, so all these little things after you pass the ten year mark, they just start. Uh, things wear out. I mean, uh, next it'll be airlines. Um, they'll start rotting out. Um, this truck has a new wiring harness, but usually at the 10 year mark, uh, it has an engine harness. It doesn't have a chassis harness. So after that wiring will become an issue. So you'll start having to go through and systematically replace wires or put a new harness on it. And it's all just time consuming, nagging little things. So if you get a newer truck, you're always going to have the risk of a motor blowing up. That doesn't matter. Uh, but the little things that plague you every single weekend, they kind of go away for the most part, which is why uh, mega carriers have new trucks. They just don't want to have downtime like that. And uh, you get a higher tax write off. There's a whole bunch of things. I've done a video, new truck versus old truck. And I'm not looking for a new truck, but uh, one like a 2019 model or so, 18 model with half million miles would kind of be up what I'm kind of looking at. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pull the trigger because when you have a truck that's paid off, and I hope you guys get to that point, uh, I don't, I could, but I'm not going to pull that kind of funds out uh, to just chunk down 90 to 100 grand on a truck, which is, yeah, they're 80 to 100, probably closer to 100 for what I want, an owner operator spec truck, but um, somewhere between 80 and 100 for that truck I'm talking about right now might be able to find one for 75000 I don't have enough cash to pull that out. I wouldn't want to. That would liquidate me pretty bad. Um, so I would have to finance it. When you don't have a bill on anything, it is a very hard thing to want to go finance anything. But the only thing that has me considering is I don't have any bills, no mortgage, no nothing. I'm pretty sure I could easily afford it. The kids are teenagers now. They want to come with dad during the summer. Ellie does. It's a 76 inch sleeper. It's not a double bunk. I have to kind of build a shelf up there for them. It's very cramped. So a T680 or God forbid, even a Freightliner Cascadia or something of that nature with more room and an actual double bunk. I'm really thinking about it because uh, it could be beneficial for me. And, and I would save fuel because uh, this truck doesn't get good fuel. So I, I'm doing all the numbers and looking. I'm looking. But I'm telling you right now, trucks have come down enough. I just did a video a while back. You want to become an owner-operator? Do it now. Do it now. Set your business model up to succeed in this market, and you're going to do good. Because the market will go back up. It's kind of in a down. I don't think it's going to go much lower. Maybe a hair. So don't max yourself out. Leave a little cushion. But if you can survive where we're rolling right now, when it shoots back up, if you're smart and don't buy Hellcats and, and show off all your money and blow it, you're going to do really good. Save that money. And then when it goes down, you have reserves. That's how trucking works. It's up and down, up and down. So buy now, survive now, and you'll do fine. So I am looking at trucks. Um, so I'm even shopping. Yours truly is kind of shopping. Uh, whether I buy anything, I don't know. And then the other elephant in the room, as you guys know, I've been kind of holding off because FMCSA is talking about um, governing all trucks to 65. And though I'm not a speed demon, I'm done. I will retire. So to sign my name to a loan with that elephant in the room is also another thing that keeps me from pulling the trigger. So uh, anyways, truck prices are good if you're shopping. They've come down. I don't know. They're going to go a little lower. New prices, I don't understand. It's, it's They're out in La La Land. They can't park another new truck on their lot, but they won't come off the $200,000, $225,000 price tag. And nobody's buying them, so let them sit. Build another lot, guys. You're going to need a lot of storage room. Uh, other than that, CRST system seems to be uh, working pretty good. It's actually, they're getting the bugs ironed out, and it's much, much faster in pain. So that's a good thing. Other than that, I wanted to call this load board wild cards. You know, I don't get on our load board much. Um, I work direct with agents mostly. But once in a while, don't rule out the load board because we have customer service reps that are not really agents, but they'll put loads on the load board. And I call them wild cards. It's not somebody you're going to deal with on a regular basis. They don't put a lot of loads out there, but they do end up there somehow. So, um, 
this last week, I, the agents had some loads I weren't real interested in, so I got on the load board. I did, actually. Uh, usually I have my wife do it, but I was just kicking it, so I had nothing better to do. And I found a load that paid really good coming right to my hometown, that load of slinkies. So, uh, you know, don't rule out the load board. There's always wild card loads on there. So, all right, that's it. That's all I got. Watch this little trip of trucking in the 1900s. I tell you how it came about in the video, but basically, I don't know what it was. Me and my son were talking about something, and he goes, oh, Dad, you're from the 1900s. You're just, you're so out of date. You know how kids are, teenagers. It sounded so funny to me, but we're 20-something years into the 2000s. So, yeah, back in the 1900s. To me, that's like, what are you saying? Back in the 1800s? It, it just, to me and my brain, it's like 2000 three, not 2023. Anyways, back in the 1900s, it was a while ago. So here's a little uh, thing about trucking back then, and I'll be back with the money. Uh, I think we did pretty good this week, but we'll see. All right, see you bye. <clears throat> How we doing? We at the Iowa 70, which was a knockoff from the Iowa 80 here just outside Kansas City. Got a new thing. We're going to do stories from back in the 1900s. I thought this one still had a restaurant. <coughs> Excuse me. But they just have a Wendy's and a Dairy Queen now. But back in the 1900s, I actually started in the late 80s, but I guess my prime driving was the 90s. I'm sure glad I got to see trucking back then. But it used to be you'd pull into a truck stop, and first and foremost, it was a truck stop. It wasn't a travel plaza. That didn't come around till the mid-90s, and it was a slow progression. In fact, it used to have signs, professional drivers only. And uh, when they started putting gas pumps out front, they'd have a little convenience store for them, but kind of the truck stop was kept separate. The driver's room, restaurant, showers, whatnot. So you used to go sit down in the restaurant and first of all, they had these things. They were phones with cords on them. There was no cell phones back then and no internet. Can you believe that? So you'd have a phone you could call home with right at your table. And then uh, if you weren't sitting in the restaurant, there'd be a line of these things called pay phones where you'd put money in or use your calling card, which most of us did. Uh, and then the, uh, so you'd be calling home or whatever the first thing, the waitress would come up, greet you, ask you what you wanted to drink, and if you brought your thermos, she'd take your thermos. And she, uh, he knew what she was doing. She'd go wash your thermos for you and uh, fill it up with hot water and let it sit there and get good and warm. And of course, you'd eat, and it was good food back then. So you would eat, pay your deal, talk to your wife and kids at home on the payphone with the cord, can you imagine? back in the 1900s and then just before you were ready the waitress would say you about ready and you say yes ma'am she say what do you want straight up a couple sugars cream what you tell her what she wanted and she would fill up your thermos and put in as much cream and sugar as you want and hand it to you before you left it's a different world back then guys so i'm gonna start doing little stories like this for uh some of the older drivers I know a lot of you guys that are young, uh, it's a time I wish you guys would have got to see. It was a great time in trucking. Things were so much different. Drivers were different. Everything was different and better in my opinion. So I'm gonna call it back in the 1900s. Well, because it was back in the 1900s and my kid told me the other day, I don't know, we're talking about something and uh, he goes, yeah, that was back in the 1900s. And it sounded funny, but my God, it's true, right? We're 20 years into the 2000s here. <sighs> Man, I'm getting old, I guess. All right. Oh, I got a shower. I got a kink in my shoulder. I'm not feeling too good. But uh, if you're watching the money news, uh, I'm probably going to put this into Phil while I'm adding up the numbers. And right now, I just unloaded the Kansas City one. I'm going to Alton to go to Chicago see how the rest of this week goes anyways god bless you guys back in the 1900s see you bye hey guys we're back hey 
I am in my uh, Tonka truck. The wife's in here. She's lonely. She just wants to be by me. I don't really know what she's doing in here, but she misses me. Well, I didn't get a Tonka truck, but I got this big old, what is this, loader. We're going to try that. We're going to strap that on the back. The Tonka truck he had, nah, wasn't what I was looking for. I'm looking for an old metal one from like the 70s, like when I was a kid. This one's mostly metal, but you can see it's plastic here, plastic wheels. And the new Tonka trucks like that, they suck. They fall apart. Anyways, we went and got that. We had lunch. Oh, and I just finished up the numbers. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the uh, back in the 1900s story. That should be in between whatever. So let's see. Let's get going. Oh, sorry. I felt like taking a nap now. I ate a hamburger and now I'm sleepy. So we left Sunday morning. Okay, if you guys were new to this, all these numbers are to me after the 25% that I give up that I don't really give up because our freight pays better, but I've already talked about that at length. You can go back and watch it. So all this is to me after their deductions, the 25% of the things they took 25% of. So... We left Sunday morning with a load of beams that we had on. We loaded uh, Friday on the way in. Left Sunday morning with that. Went up to Perrysburg, Ohio, up by uh, Toledo, just south of Detroit. Oh, that paid me $1,711.86 at two seventy-seven dollars a mile. Beams just aren't paying real good right now. Coils always pay more. But it's what was available on 618 miles. Then deadheaded 53 miles to New Boston, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Man, I was there for six hours loading. It was a big old mess. But, uh, you know, I've been there lots of times. Never had that trouble. Um, Lori's a good agent. Gets good paying freight. I know a lot of you guys, she takes a little while to warm up to. But once you get to know her, she's, she's the bomb. So I'm not putting in for detention time, you know. I've talked about that, but if you know you want to cry and throw a big old fit and a temper tantrum and demand this and demand that, uh, sometimes it's justified. If I go there again and it happens again, then we will revisit that. But, you know, this is trucking. Uh, and this place I've been to many, many times and I've never really been held up. Things happen in life. I'm not going to throw a big old fit and put a distaste in Lori's mouth and the shipper's mouth over, you know, things that may have been out of their control so anyways i loaded new boston michigan a coil small one thirty thousand. went to uh kansas city missouri paid me two thousand three hundred ninety three dollars and eight eighty cents at three dollars and nineteen cents a mile nothing in kansas city so took the big hit on the deadhead uh this week went from kansas city over to Alton, illinois 254 miles loaded uh that round bar that place uh my last video that really messed up place in Chicago to deliver to. Um, loaded that and paid me $936 and 90 cents at $3 40 cents a mile on 275 miles. And that day was good. I was kind of tired. I'm, this shoulder's really been hurting me and, uh, not sleeping well at night. So, uh, I got up to just below Chicago early in the day. Couldn't deliver the next morning. I Took like 14 hours off. I went full flip-flop. It was kind of nice to rest a little bit. Let off the hammer. Um, then I did edit 116 miles uh, to Sterling, Illinois. I picked up that load coming right to my hometown of Poplar Bluff. Paid me $1,150.24. And I did not do... What did that pay me a mile? Hold on. Didn't write it down. 289 a mile. Not the greatest, that's all right. Uh, Cause I had to have, I only had six miles home. So that's nice. That was a load of slinky coils. So you add all that up, my gross to the truck this week, $6,192 and 80 cents. And I was home Friday around noon. Um, uh, for a total of 2,040 loaded miles at $3.03 three is what I averaged on a loaded mile for the week. I had 423 empty miles this week, so 
I don't count those the same as uh, loaded, but you do with them as you may or what you want. Now, deductions, these are my deductions. If you're new to this, of course, you may have truck payments, you may have this, you may have that. I give you mine just so you see what kind of deductions owner operators have. And uh, I include things that you can write off on your taxes that you may or may not have thought of. So let's get going with that. Uh, right off the bat, $375. That's my CRST weekly deductions. 225 of that is my trailer rent. Then the rest is base plays, bobtail insurance, uh, quail com charges, trans flow charges, whatever. All the little things that add up to $375 a week. I have $1,803.05 in fuel receipts. That's before discounts. So you can knock some of that off. Truck ran at about 6.1 miles to the gallon. Uh, did pretty good on fuel this week. A little bit warmer weather, a little bit lighter freight. I had uh, $22, which is kind of high, but I paid to park at a Petro just outside of St. Louis. Pretty high, 22 bucks. Only one parking though this week. I just ordered an air filter for the truck. Uh, it was $171.48. Talked about it in one of my previous videos. Napa wanted three hundred and fifty something dollars for this air filter. What a joke! I mean, I don't even know why they're one hundred and seventy one bucks. I almost tried a an off brand one that they were selling for eighty bucks. But you know, an air filter is not a place you want to skimp because you don't want dirt getting in the motor and uh, wearing out your cylinders. So, got a a Packard filter online at Big Rig World or something. Is that what it was? Uh, for one hundred and seventy one dollars forty eight cents. I bought a pair of work jeans for $80.92. These may seem a little out of order. I just go through the credit card charges uh, and write them down. Then I had $91.05 in tolls. I spent $71.76 at Walmart for coolant because I was going to replace a coolant line and ended up not doing it. I put a a better hose clamp on and lost some coolant so i needed some anyways plus i've been losing coolant I, I talked about that earlier i got a coolant leak i am dealing with and uh so i'm adding coolant uh then i went harbor freight she stopped and got me some four boxes of rubber gloves that was 50 to 5 dollars 46 cents uh, these are all tax write-offs then i ordered some sleeves like welding sleeves uh summer's coming and you have to have long sleeve shirts or you can get away with sleeves. So you can wear your t-shirt, pull your sleeves on to get in and out of these places and then take the sleeves off and going down the road. That was $54.17. You minus all of that from the gross leaves me a net profit of $3,467.91 for the week. So I think we did a little better than working at McDonald's this week. Barely. So my wife's happy with that. She don't have to get a job. She can stay retired all as well. <laughs> all right, y'all. God bless you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye now.